like one of the things that came from talking about uh, street magic. I've came from talking before. Is <laughs> <laughs> you won that round. Right. <laughs> Jingle time. We're talking about street magic and how people, um, how to keep people there. Mm. Because they can walk away any second. Yeah. Okay. So we're talking about how, how to keep people invested. So, and the, one of the ways you said is to like potentially take something of value yeah. from someone. Yeah. You take like a ring or, or a you know high value dollar bill and uh, dollar dollar bill. Yeah. Get those dollars in. Yeah. And then and then and then people want to see whether you give it back or not or what you do with it. Mm. So there's some kind of like there's a reason why you stick around. And this like reminds me of like techniques of writing stories. Because one of the techniques of writing stories is to get a character that you like and then put them in danger. So you're going to stick around and see if they get out of that danger. Yeah. A similar sort of idea. Yeah. yeah. Right? Similar concept. Um, so that's what got us talking about stories, which is like a really fascinating, fascinating thing. Um, so while we're here on Harry Potter, okay, um, in most stories there's a, a character that's a bit like the... Uh, the sage. They call him the sage. It's because okay. it's the person... Because you have a character, you like the character, they make you like the character, and then they go on a journey. They're trying to achieve a goal. Okay? So, in, like... Uh, any boxing film, they're trying to win the match. They're trying to beat yeah. the other opponent. Yeah. Stuff like that. And you'll find in, in almost every single film, any film worth its salt, they will have a goal that you're trying to, they're trying to achieve. And then there'll be stuff in the way from them doing it. Blah, 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 blah. That's the basic idea of it. So, and one of the ways of helping a writer get, like, get the character to overcome all these things, all these, like, things that pop up in the way, is to have a sage that actually helps them. So, otherwise, they're just pondering around and then suddenly, oh, look, they overcame everything. Well done. So, the sage is the person that helps them? Helps them. Helps oh. them along the way. Helps them along to their journey to get to what they're actually. So wanting. I'm your sage. No, you are a little bit anyway, genuinely. Well, you're my sage. Oh. We could be each other's sage. Oh. That's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. You're welcome. Mm. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> Love you too. Uh... <laughs> He's gone all shy now. I've gone all. I've gone He's gone red. Shy, camera shy. Cool. Uh, yeah. So for for Harry Potter. <laughs> But for Harry Potter, yeah. That is Dumbledore. Dumbledore is that the guy that is... He's, he's the best wizard in in the wizarding world. And Harry Potter has to... I, I would... Has to try and kill Voldemort. Or of some sort. Or just do something like that. And, and, and the sage is there to help him. Yeah. So... Um, I don't know where I was going with that. That's just like... I love the whole story concept and l researching how stories are actually made. And hopefully this will help us with magic. Because, yeah. like, obviously not exactly the same, because we were talking about earlier that they're very quite different things. Yeah, well, in one of them you have to show someone a trick. Yeah. In the other you have to just tell them a story. Just tell them a story. Yeah, man, just tell them a story. It's a story. <laughs> just tell them, you know, it, it, it doesn't have to be a good story. You just gotta True. finish the story. It would be nice. If it <laughs> it's, it's a bonus. If it's good. <laughs> it would be pretty good. But it's also nice when the trick's good too. <laughs> yeah. True. Not a lot of magicians do good tricks. They don't. Which is quite sad. Mm. And the pacing of the trick. Yeah. Oh. That's it. Like I'm still having problems with that though. Ah, uh, me too. Always. It depends what trick as well. Some tricks are like are good. The the yeah. methods are good and they're actually falling, but the pacing is so slow they're not worth doing. Yeah. Which is like <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like damn it, <laughs> which is really frustrating. But when yeah. the 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 main thing I'm actually having a problem with at the moment is trying to perform a trick in an interesting way. Ah, uh, so hard. It's actually really it hard. It is. It's so. What do you bring to goddamn it? hard? Because it can bring yourself, which is fun, but like. But there's no story to it. No, it's just, there's just. But I think it's okay. I'm, like, yeah. That's where I kind of have conflicted issues is like when like I want there to be a really good narrative to like almost every trick I do mm -hmm. like I want there to be like a clear like, like delineation of like 
what's going on, yeah. why you're doing it, and like when it's ended, they go, oh wow. Like, <laughs> that sounds so sarcastic. Oh, wow. <laughs> But I wow. li- I, I like them to Oh wow. <laughs> sure. Wow. <laughs> no, it's the best of the wow. Oh wow. Um, wow. That's like a wow. who is it? Owen Wilson? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, someone was doing an impression of him and they got a piece of advice from someone else um, to do a better impression. And then oh, the yeah. piece of advice was to make your mouth look more like an asshole. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. I think it was Louis C.K. or something who told this story in the stand-up. I'm just oh, misquote, yeah, hash sure. misquote. <laughs> I think that was Louis C.K. <laughs> wow. I can't do it. <laughs> but um yes, so I'd I'd really like that to like I want people to like when when my, I stop showing people a, a trick and, and the trick's done and it's all it's all finished. I wanna, you know, Actually, leave him with something rather yeah. than just oh, he found my card. Yeah, that's it. That's like the problem with card magic, right? Yeah. Because I love card magic and it is amazing and pretty and, and wonderful and hard and there's such a skill to it. But when you're trying to like <laughs> after a few tricks, it's like pick a card. Here it is. <laughs> pick another one. Here it is. <laughs> pick another one. Oh Here wow! It is again. Wow! You know that that's the wow. best you're gonna get. The best you're gonna get is a wow. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Like, I'd like a, oh shit, fuck yeah, holy <laughs> shit, fucks. That's it, like, like that's yeah. like the real struggle with finding a good good card trick. And that's where the, some of the best card tricks are, is when it's like deviates from that. Yeah. Um, which, I, which is why I like the regeneration, because it's not a yeah, card trick. Yeah, that is um, such a cool But trick. then, then on the other hand, I'm not sure if people like stories with magic. No, not, not no, tricks. no, no, definitely. Like, dep- like, depends what kind of story you do. It's like, I remember seeing um, Chris Ramsey's, Ramsey's. He's a magician. He's an amazing magician. He's got his own YouTube blog and whatever, a channel. We'll um, hook him up. We'll hook him up. Sorry, what? We'll hook him up. We'll hook him up. Yeah, we'll, we're, Chris we're, Rams. we're big enough to hook Chris yeah, Ramsey up. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we will name drop Chris Ramsey because um, <laughs> we are better than him. And he could do with the publicity. Yeah, really. to, he be could, fair. yeah to be fair. Yeah. Like, he, could, he could use some help. We've got like two viewers and all those... Yeah, those two viewers are going to help him out. Yeah. Massively. Massively. Way more than him being on live TV. Yeah, I think he owes us. Yeah, man. He's going to owe us for these two, two gonna, extra viewers. Yeah, and if he even... If he, when he watches this, when he will... It's not an if, it's, it's, it's when. when. It's you know, whenever he has a Bear in mind, this guy's got about 250,000 followers. Right? Yeah, yeah. Subscribers. Just, just bear that in just mind. Just bear that in mind, and he's, like, really famous. Not really famous, but, like, he's met some massive people. Mm. And, and good. And he's very good. He's, he's the rare good one. Yeah, like, and enjoyable to watch. Yeah, man. Very, I like him. It's a likeable magician, which is very hard. No, no, which is really hard yeah. to find. <laughs> <laughs> really hard to find. Can we see whether anyone else cares? No, don't disturb it. Oh, here we go. Right. Nah, it's, it's just the same. So we, guys, we got one person. That's right. That's so right. whoever's still here, question out for you. Um, back to the story thing. What is your favourite book or film and, and why? So my, my favourite well, books... Uh, Harry Potter because um, I think it's because you care so much about Harry Potter because he's like young and you're like oh god but anything like Stranger Things where the glasses like a... put me off I'll be honest oh completely I read the book I hate the films <laughs> the films are pretty rubbish compared to the book like don't bother uh, and, and the glasses now put me off a little bit because it's associated with that like when I, when I heard the words Harry Potter I was like oh god God, what is that shit? But then I read them, I was like, oh my God, this is like amazing. <laughs> no wonder everyone loves this. <laughs> um, genuinely, yeah. Um, so it's my favorite because cause like, you care about him actually how he's gonna do it and you, you're there through the whole thing. And he's a ballsy motherfucker. He does not care. He just goes out and does all those terrifying things no matter how scared he is. And that was like, I learned something from reading that. So I learned a life lesson from reading a book which is really rare. It's really cool. Well, that's why I enjoyed it to begin with. Nice. Um, uh, favourite film? Or... Oh, God. Probably, it's got a lucky number 11, okay? And um, lucky number 11 because, like, there's... I love being surprised 
sci-fi stuff, which is probably why I like magic. Yeah. <laughs> and why I like Harry Potter. Like, it's one of the few books that could, like, genuinely, I didn't know what was going to happen next. I was like, I have no idea. Which is so rare, because when you're writing a, a story, you have to you kind of follow a formula, and you know what's happening. But, yeah, anyway, in this film, Lucky Number 11, like, there's such a twist and such a surprise that it's so enjoyable. You go. Favourite film and favourite book. Why? Um... It's, it'd take me too long to name my absolute favourite because I have to decide. Just a couple of... But, like, but one couple of ones one that really sticks with me because uh, it's the one that I remember that I cried over. Oh. <laughs> um, oh. Like, I, I very rarely cry over a film. It's happened like three times in the last like however long I can remember. It'll happen. Um, the older you get, the more you realise life, life is crap. It'll happen but, but whilst I was up in London right over yeah. Christmas... I spent I spent three months in London over Christmas. Did you? Yeah. Was it three months? Where did you three stay? Three months. Uh, up in South Tottenham. Did you like stay with someone you knew? Or did no, you I was house sitting. You were house sitting. House sitting. Oh, cool. So there's someone uh, someone you knew, had uh, gone and you were looking after their house. Yeah. Cool. But I was like all alone in this like two so two oh. two bed flat. Right? <laughs> wow. I was all alone, South Tottenham. Wow. <laughs> in in London, right? And 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 I loved it. Yeah. Like, like as a whole, I loved it. It was yeah. great. One of the best things I've done. But also, like, hour Pressing to hour, when, when you're alone in a yeah. whole house that you've never, ever really oh been in. Oh, my God, in, isn't that sad? And have not much to do, right? Because I, I could only bring to that house what I could carry, right? So I didn't have, like, a lot of stuff. Um, and very limited internet, too. So, like, I rationed myself to, like, one Netflix film a night, right? And Why that was, limited like, internet? Why? Yeah, well, I had my little snazzy... Box Did thing. they not have a thing there? No, like there was nothing there. There was no phone line, no home line. Like, I couldn't even get a wireless router there. Like, oh, so I, I had my so little like bad. forty gigabytes of data a month, right? Wow. Which, which sounds like a lot for a it mobile, but for like your whole internet, for home, out and about, for like wow. everything, forty forty wow. gigabytes a month. I know, yeah. right? So, <laughs> so I spent Christmas alone, right? Yeah. Over oh Christmas, God. Oh. like my first Christmas alone, oh. completely alone, new house, n- oh, new everything, completely alone. I I had one of the best Christmas dinners though. Did you almost kill yourself? I would have done. <laughs> See, I, I came close. <laughs> if I was you, I'd have gotten a bath, got a bottle of wine, and just fucking gone. <laughs> Don't just... joke about it, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. But that's not cool. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, my first Christmas alone, it was it was really sad. I cried like a lot. Yeah, yeah, completely. But um. It was also one of the best. <laughs> it was also one of the best. Brilliant. <laughs> I, I, I cried. Uh, I had the best Christmas meal I've ever had. I cooked it myself. Really? Right? Yeah. yeah. Nice. I, I went up to I went up to Tesco's, bought, <laughs> bought, bought it all myself, right? Bought oh. everything I wanted. Bought uh, two litres of custard. <laughs> right? That must be such a... Oh, you don't have to rely on your parents. You get what you I want. I know. It's so good. <laughs> it was so great. Two litres of custard. Two and you just had that, didn't you? Yeah, yeah I, that I, and cucumber. I literally drank <laughs> custard. It was fucking great. Right. Custard and cucumber. Two litres of Sacred custard. Sacred seas. Yeah. Two, two litres of custard. Twelve mince pies. <laughs> uh, Twelve cherry bake wells. Oh, my God. Right. What have you done? Lots and lots of cheese. Yeah, obviously. Fine, Crackers. Fine. I'll give right. you that. I made my own pigs and blanket yeah. with like really nice sausages, really great bacon. Okay, that's cool. Right, made I'll made my own. That. Fine. I yeah. had a whole chicken to myself. <laughs> Just right. a whole chicken. I, I'm not a massive fan of turkey. Always slightly dry for me. Yeah. So I just got a whole fucking tikka chicken. chicken. It was whole like chicken. a tikka chicken. It was great. <laughs> right. Came seasoned and everything. Brilliant. Take I it out the bag. Put it yeah. in the oven. Fine. I put some bacon strips on the chicken. Oh. Right. Chicken bacon bacon chicken. Completely great. I, I made my own roast potatoes. Right, standard. They're hard. But they turned They're out hard. really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, crispy? Yeah, crispy. Good. Like how just how them? I I just went simple, man. I I didn't have a lot. I yeah. I was literally cooking Christmas dinner with one baking tray. <laughs> oh, a normal no. cutlery knife. <laughs> right. Not a sharp knife, not not a carving knife, nothing. What kind of house do these people live? Jeez. It was empty. Okay, so so I was house sitting for an empty flat. It wasn't someone's home. Like, they, they hadn't lived there for a long time. Okay. But I, I, it was empty. I was house-sitting a empty property. Why? Who t- did you just go, can I live here, please? I'll, I'll be honest, I can't really go into details. Okay. 
but because okay. of the people involved. Okay. But I was housing for someone I knew who hadn't who owned the property. Okay. But hadn't lived there for a Okay, fine. It was like okay. they moved out. Fine. Right? Okay, I get that. So like, the only stuff I had in that house was the stuff I bought, <laughs> right? Which which included Maybe like so bring a carving knife. Yeah. But I literally brought with me one plate, one fork. No, uh, one plate, two forks, two knives, two spoons, and two teaspoons. Like the really cheap pound cutlery yeah. set from Poundland. Yeah. I bought one of them. Yeah. Two of everything. Yeah. Not a particularly sharp knife, I'll be honest. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Poundland, are, Poundland are not known for their sharp knives. But I, I cooked Christmas dinner, right, on my own with, with two forks, two, two knives, two spoons, and, and one plate, one baking tray, and, and a grill rack, right? That's all I had. That's all I had. I didn't have any colander or like flour to make them all crispy you know on the what, edges. That's probably like more impressive than any magic trick I've ever seen. Yeah, before. man, it was that's literally it. magic. Like I I've would, got, I've got pictures somewhere I of this would, stuff. Yeah, I was really proud. Like, if you so sped that up in time lapse, I'd rather watch that. Yeah, man, I'd, I'd rather. Magic scene, but yeah, carry on. Yeah. Back to the. <laughs> okay, so so Christmas Day, I made Christmas dinner, the best Christmas dinner I've had, right? Yeah. And I had potatoes, uh, carrots, parsnips. Um, Good man. It was great. Like Good bacon, man. so like, oh man, it was, it was, it was nice. Streaky bacon or normal bacon? No, just normal bacon. Normal, okay. normal bacon. Um, over the chicken, over the sausages. Oh man, it was. Great. You do it right, that'd be good. Yeah. I hate fatty bacon. Yeah. Not that kind of guy. No, that's why I just got the normal, not the streaky. Like, if you, if you do streaky good enough, and then till it like. Oh, for sure. But then yeah. you hardly get any bacon anyway. True, then so you, you might as well get, just, you just get, get salty bacon. fat. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've forgotten where we were. Oh, uh, cr- Christmas Day. Yeah. Right, th- my favourite oh, film. Are you crying? Yeah. Oh, right. Gosh, Cry right, on so. Christmas Day. Um, it happened. And then, so, <laughs> so yeah, I spent Christmas Day alone, right? And then, and then, my birthday is the tenth of January, right? Okay. Just in case you didn't know. I didn't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know me how long? No. Not long. <laughs> so. So so Christmas alone, and then like, however long it is, like twenty-ish days until my birthday, right? Fine. And I was still up in London, and and I wasn't alone all day on my birthday. My twentieth birthday wasn't spent alone, but Good. my Christmas was. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> um, you get you you win some, you lose some. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> so so I so I met someone uh, for a couple of hours on my twentieth birthday. Went to Itsu, did did that kind of stuff. Ha- had a milkshake. Yeah, man. I'm a that guy of simple taste. That's, that's, yeah, that's, that's the thing. kind of guy I that's am. Your thing. Yeah, you, you have your 20th birthday, you go to Itsu. Yeah. You know, fill yeah. out all the stops. <laughs> and then, and then yeah. I went through Covent Garden, and oh, actually, I saw, I saw uh, Samuel, uh, one, one of the best Covent Garden street performers really? on my 20th birthday. That's cool. I'd seen him like three times before that, but I saw him again on my 20th birthday. On your birthday, cool. Which was great. Uh, in Covent Garden, it was great. And then, it was so great. <laughs> <laughs> was it good? Yeah, it was great. Wow. Um, wow. So, so wow. after after we, I saw I saw the the best uh, magician up in London. Uh, uh, not magician, uh, performer. So circus guy, really great. Um, so great. We, we, <laughs> you've just given up at this point. Just tell me the fucking story. And then, and then it's then like we, watching one of your street shows. I know. I'm gonna I do just, a jacket escape. Oh in no, a no. <laughs> no, no. We'll do it. I'll do it in a minute. So, so after after the street performance, we, we, we go to Maxwell's, a restaurant place up in Covent Garden, cool. and and they get a Long Island iced tea, right? And and I get a strawberry milkshake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. Uh, Actually, no, it does. It surprised me you drank anything other than water. Yeah. Well, but it was on your birthday. So it was my birthday, yeah, so yeah. I pulled out all the stops. <laughs> yeah. Milkshake. Strawberry milkshake. Um, on your birthday. And then, and then I went home, right? Oh god. And it, and it was I went home about half nine. Quite late then. Quite late for me. For your birthday. And and then and then I watched uh, the film Fifty Fifty. Oh god, the cancer one. Oh yeah. But I hate that word. I hate that whole fucking thing. Oh no. And oh. So I was alone on my twentieth birthday on the evening, right? Watching that film. Watching Fifty Fifty. Watching a film about a man getting cancer. Yeah. And trying to survive. Oh wow. The the first time I watched it too. Oh. I've watched it twice since. Oh. But but the first time I watched Fifty Fifty was alone on my twentieth oh. birthday. Oh. And and I cried. Of course you did. 
Like all night, oh, I cried. Of course you did. It was awful. That sounds like the worst plan ever. It was also really great, but... Yeah, but... Yeah, uh, wow. Wow. <laughs> that sounds awful. <laughs> but, but, kind of the most memorable film I've kind of watched. Fine. Possibly not favourite, but it's, it's <laughs> like... <laughs> we'll go with not favourite. It's favorite. like... But memorable. First or second. Yeah, we'll go with memorable. Yeah, good. I, I, I wow. really like yeah, the film. Yeah, That's yeah. why I watched yeah. it twice since. Wow. And I, and I cried the third time oh, too. Wow. The, the second yeah, time, yeah. first time cried a lot. Second time, not so much. Numb. Third time, it got me again. Oh, what got man. me again. Depends what mood I'm in. Don't. The second Don't. time, I wanted to cry, but didn't. You were like, no, no, no. I'm, I was, I was stronger than that. The third time, I was like, ah, I won't Just cry. Just let it happen. It got me. Just let it, damn it. Yeah. <sighs> um, favorite book? Uh, probably uh, from the street. To screen by Harry Anderson. Yeah. Yeah. This one you bought very recently, wasn't it? Yeah, very recently. Um, Harry Anderson yeah. uh, and and Anderson, Anderson. For everyone else who who cares. No, we're we're not mentioning that book. That that book's just for me. That's just for you. Is no, that no. even filming anymore? That looks like it died. That one's not. No. Cool. At least we have got the audience. So let's yeah. actually talk about something that would be good for the podcast. I think, uh, I think talking about me crying on Christmas is pretty good. That's pretty, pretty good. good, but uh, I don't know. Um, it's pretty sad. Well, yeah, sad and good. Sad, you know. sad is good. Good in a, in a sad way. You know. I want to talk about like some magic, though. Um, I had a rough time up in London. Yeah, it doesn't sound yeah. fun. Was, I loved it. Like, I, like I don't regret it. it. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, three months, man. A long old time. Yeah, it felt like a long time. It's not a long time, but it felt. No, it is. Age. It's a long time to be on your own yeah. in London. All, 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 the only people that I really talked to on a daily basis was other street performers. Yeah. Which is fine, but still. it's not fine. It's really not fine. Like they're pleasant for a bit, but that. No, long... they're, they're pleasant. But it's not fine. <laughs> it's not okay. They're always pleasant, but but. It's, it's not okay. <laughs> it's not okay. Yeah. Um, no, it's not okay. It does things to you. It does. I can. Favorite magic trick. Let's go with that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's change to that. I'm actually intrigued. Favorite what magic your favorite trick. Favorite magic trick is. Like one that I can do. Not necessarily. No, just one you've witnessed. Preferably, oh. you can, it can be one that you can do. Maybe favorite magic trick you perform and favorite magic trick you've seen someone else. Well, the favourite magic trick that I perform is... I don't know. I don't know. That's a tough one, man. I mean... It is. It depends who I'm performing to as well. But in general? Yeah, so regardless I mean, of audience. No, because then then I have favourite ones that I've performed to magicians that have pulled the pants off of them. And I love because like it's such a magician fool. It's like my favourite. Let's not include that. To 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 a normal crowd. To to a normal crowd. Uh, what? <laughs> I, I, I did this trick on Friday, right? Impromptu. Right. right. Like, I, I wasn't planning on doing it. Oh, this hurts. I know it's it's uh, not too comfy, is it? It was for a bit, and now. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's probably why. That's what was pressing against your bladder. Oh God, yeah. Oh, the, screw the poker. <laughs> He's done. He's out of here. I wouldn't do this for a bit. <laughs> What's the time? Okay, that's fine. That's not bad at all. Um, I'm just hungry. Do you want to go get some food? Yeah. Where should we go? Itsu. I kind of want a burrito. Oh, there's that burrito place. Right next to it. Should we, we can go get a, an Itsu and a burrito and then find somewhere to sit if you want. Yeah. Do you want to sit in somewhere? So, podcast paused. Tim is hungry. He also needs the toilet, but he didn't want to mention that. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> we're we're gonna go off of the beach. Go get a burrito. Go get itsu, and then this is just us. Yeah, th- this crap. this this week's podcast was interrupted by the disappearance of a magician. Yeah, who had some personal uh, sad we, we won't go personal into that, things. We're not going to tell why, but he's just had some know. personal stuff. But he's going through some stuff. Bless um, him. But he will be back soon. He will be back. Uh, it, it, we're going to drag him back, no matter what, because we love the guy. Forcefully back. Forcefully back. 
um, and we can't wait to have him back. But this is also fun too. Oh, that's alright. We've done this for a while. We've done this. He for disappeared a for a while, like uh, last year, and we we were forced. To he's a true magician. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's a true magician. He genuinely it, disappears. Just genuinely just disappears for a little bit. From I think time you're to time. the only one that hasn't disappeared. Yeah. One. Well, <laughs> well, you disappeared for three months, so I, I'll give you that. Uh, I was contactable. True. I left Brighton, but I didn't disappear. Fair. Like, I'll be honest, if, if one of you said, do you want to meet up, I would have said yeah. Quite a bad magician, though, you know, when it hasn't disappeared. You should probably learn. <laughs> well, I... I am joking, that you're a good magician, and we appreciate that. Well, I mean, it shows, the proof is in the pudding, as they say. I mean, out of three magicians, the two that have disappeared, on and off from time to time, don't do it as a full-time job. The one who hasn't disappeared and has always been contactable by the other two magicians and has always put like every day into it and hasn't like taken a break. Does it full time? Pretty much. <laughs> okay, like I, I exaggerate summer, on, on the full time. I, I'm, a, I'm a street performer. You, you perform I get on the street and then I, you get a gig. I get the odd gig. Yeah. But it's all I do to earn money. I don't earn money any other way apart from magic. All my expenses are paid through magic. Like I'm self-sufficient on, on performing. And I'm the only one who hasn't disappeared. Life lesson for you there. Genuinely, Don't actually, pretty, pretty good point. It is a good point. I mean, like, we'll just pause for this guy. And he's stood right next to us. Anyway, so got a, he's got a... Um, uh, uh, what are those? A daisy? A daisy through his ear? Oh. So, his ear hole. Like he's... Yeah. He's got a ear piercing and he's, and he's put, put a put daisy through. Oh, Which is cool, it's gnarly. But, um, hey, I, it's back to the 60s, okay? Is it? Hippies. Hippie time. Nice. Sure they put yeah, probably. flowers in their ear. I'm sure they did that. I think they were putting flowers wherever they could find <laughs> <laughs> they were just spreading the love. Just flower. <laughs> flower. <laughs> flower power. It came flower power, that's what it came They from. found a hole they put a flower in it. <laughs> that's what No? Well, yeah, no. Was I or don't. was that not the sixties? <laughs> that was exactly what I think they <laughs> <laughs> They found some substances and did exactly the same thing as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they found um, yeah. LSD and flowers. But life lesson, go on, what, what were you about Life to lesson, say? no, genuinely, um, continued effort. Yeah, you just got to keep on, I mean, I'm, okay, so, so disclaimer, I'm not great. <laughs> like, like, so, and, and, I, and I know I'm not great. I'm going to disclaimer that back, you're, you're, you're very good at, like, certain areas, other yeah. areas is obviously, for like, sure. they say the same for me, I'm good at some, but I need work on so many others. Yeah. All right, we're all good in our fields, but, but. You're the most consistent. Yeah, and I think consistency is the key. Cons consistency is key. I've heard that in like loads of other places. Consistency. Is um, key. Like I, I don't want to knock you or Christo. But, but yeah, sometimes you you have them. disappeared for long periods of time. Yeah. And kind of left the magic. Yeah. And then I've had conversations with you both. You're gonna hate me so much after this. But uh, then then I've had conversations with you both, and and you both seem really up for it. Which, which I, I always get my hopes up at. And then over a couple of disappearances from you both, I've gone, ah, well, maybe, maybe they're just saying that. <laughs> yeah, no, I get <laughs> like, I'll be completely get... honest. Yeah, of course, that like, is, honestly, honestly, it's key. Um, like, uh, like, now you're slightly better. Like, yeah. But there was a, at least a year period of time. Well, I, have, I might not even even known you no, that long. We met this time last year. But there's so been a long a year, period. There was a half a year. There's six months there where I was like, months. I'm not sure about this kid, you know? Yeah, no, fair so, enough. Because I met you for the first few months and you seemed like well up for it. We were doing, doing we were, stage shows. Oh, I missed that so much, man. Uh, like, we, we had a monthly stage show oh, together. I we were like gunning so for much. it. It was great. We were both working super hard at it. And, and then all of a sudden you disappeared. Yeah, there is a reason. But there is reasons. And, but, and you but, know, I understand that. I should have been better. But, uh, and I'm sorry. Well, you know, just consistency, man. Consistency. If, if you, if, if you, if you, I think if you want something, like, you just gotta keep at it. 
There's that. And, and, like, there's also a really good counter-argument to what I'm just about to say. But if you, if you genuinely want to do something and you're at least above average at it, like, this... this, this <laughs> what, I'm, what I'm about to say has a really good counter-argument and also isn't applicable to everyone. <laughs> of course. <laughs> because not everyone's cut out for everything that they think they want to do, right? But if, if we get past that, because I think that should be common knowledge. Unfortunately, I don't think it is, but I think it should be. Um, is if you really, really want to do something, and you're at least above average at it, and, and you kind of really know that in your soul that this, you really want to do it, go all in. Like, just go all in. Because it's so hard to do what you actually want to do anyway. Yeah. If you're not all in, it's probably not going to happen. True. I, I think there's... Yeah, Again, no. counter-arguments are not yeah, applicable no. to everyone. No, I think, if, I'm but. honestly, it's nice to learn a ver- variety of different things. I've enjoyed being able to do that. But yeah, I, th- I don't think you should just do one thing for your whole life. Oh, no, no, not, like, not like one specific thing. But like, if you have an end goal, go all in, because on that journey, you'll learn different things, you'll do different things, and you know, you'll grow as a person anyway. Yeah. But if you've still got your day job, and, and you don't like your day job, and you have something that you really want to do, find a fucking way to go all in. Fat. Because if you're not happy in, a, in your day job, like, you have no excuse. If, you, if, you, if you're in a job and, and it's okay, and it's paying the bills well, and it kind of makes you happy, you don't hate going to work, then sure, I understand. There's an argument, it's a good job, comfy job, easy, pays the bills, you turn into a hobbyist at what you want to do. It's great, because it's easy. But if you hate your job, if you don't like it, or even marginally dislike it, Go fucking all in on what you want to do. Or at least, yeah. like, at least try to. At least up the game a bit more, you know? Like, th- there's so many people, like, petering on about, like, midway. And there's, I think there's like, good reasons why. Yeah, there's always reasons. But, like, there's also no good reason why you shouldn't, if you really want to go all in. Yeah. Go all in. Yeah. I th- yeah. Yeah. They're just excuses. They are completely just excuses. Um, but I feel like there are some excuses that need to be like understood. Un- understood in order to overcome. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So like for me, it's been like uh, I've learnt this through this book called um, The Luck Factor. Okay. And it's the fact that like basically lucky is this book researched into lucky people and unlucky people yeah. and found the reason for key reasons why lucky people are lucky and lucky and unlucky people are not yeah. the way they are why they are the way they are how to be lucky basically yeah. and one of the reasons one of the ways basically lucky people have high expectations they believe that they can do something even though it might be a really hard thing to achieve so say so there was this example there was a, a, a study a test where um, two unlucky people that would be classified as unlucky and two lucky people classified as lucky went in um, to a room uh, separately and were told to solve this puzzle, um, which was like almost impossible. It wasn't impossible, yeah. but it was almost impossible. And now the first lucky person, he goes in and sees, sees them and goes, nope, can't be done, um, there's, there's one brick missing. He was wrong, so we were like, "Oh God, maybe this, maybe this isn't true, man. <laughs> oh no, this isn't looking well for our thing." Um, but the second lucky person, and I think they got another third one because the first one sucked up. Yeah, like, sucked. He was um, lucky, but he lacked ambition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, they all stuck at it for so much longer. One person had to, they like actually they came in and asked him like, "Do you want to do you want to stop now?" He's like. No, can I can I carry on? I'm I'm not finished. Whereas the other uh, the unlucky people, they went in and were like gave up after like five ten minutes. They're like this can't be done. Yeah. 
which is what I think I and a lot of other people do. Yeah. Is because like when you're younger, you like something goes wrong. And then you think, oh God, I've set myself up to fail. I expected good things. It's best to expect the worst. Yeah. And I hope for the best. And that way I won't ever be disappointed. For sure. Which is, which makes sense, but it's wrong. Okay. Yeah, it's just pain avoidance. Yeah, it's pain avoidance, but it's, it's bad for you. Uh, like long term, yeah. Long term uh, for your growth, for you emotionally, for you socially. So if you were to go in a social situation and think, expect to not be good at talking to people, you're yeah. going to be. For sure. But if you go into something and expect to be able to do it one day, you're going to try a lot harder. Oh, God, yeah. And you're going to get a lot better. But that's also like creating who you are. Yeah. Who you think you are is mm. who you are. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, yeah, it takes practice to do skills. Like, you can't think you're great at something and then be just great at something. Yeah. <laughs> but you have to first think you can do it yes. in order for you to be able to yeah. do it. Like, it doesn't always work in the way that who you are is who you are when it goes the other way on thinking you can do stuff but it almost pretty much certainly always does work out the opposite way when you think you can't do something yeah you can't do like you, yeah. the term like you are who you think you are works almost 100 percent of the time on what you think you mm. can't do yeah uh not so much on the things you can do because obviously the things you can do a skill and talents and things you have to hone and, and all that stuff. And blah, 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 and but it, yeah. to first learn and hone those skills, you have to believe, believe that you can do it. Yeah. So. so it's even possible. Which is such a good thing to learn, I think. And I'm, I'm, I'm learning a lot. And I, I think that is probably half the reason why I haven't stuck at it. Because I felt like it's not possible. Yeah. Which is, which is a good thing to learn. Um, and to find, try and overcome. Yeah. Which is a hard Do you know, like, 97% of my day to day is I know I can make it? Nine, like, I'd, I'd, I'd say over 95%, definitely over 90 like, pretty, pretty goddamn set on over 95%. Like, I haven't, like, micro analyzed myself this much. No, but you haven't percentage yourself. Like, I'm, I'm fairly certain of, like, 97% of day to day living. I'm so goddamn sure I can do this. Cool. Uh, it's just what I believe. Like it's kind of really what I feel. Belief to have, yeah. Uh, like, obviously I I have my doubts. Everyone does, and I think that's a good point yeah. because because if you believe it, like the problem with saying there's a difference between self belief and self delusion. Right. Yeah. But like my my point is, so you know, like. So if you go, the whole saying that if you believe you can and believe you can't, you're right. It's yeah. fine. But then that puts a lot of importance on your beliefs. So then if you, mm. if you want, for one minute think, oh, I can't, then you're going to like trip yourself up and go, oh, maybe I can't actually do it. I believe I can't yeah. do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. Oh, no, 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 I'm not going to do it. And then to try and get out of that horrible mindset is hard. Mm. It's like a cycle. Really hard. So I think it's nice to remember that sometimes you're going to have those doubts. That you're just gonna do yeah, that. I mean and it's that's natural. Fine. You got that's what like it used to scare me a lot. Yeah. When, yeah. when I had doubts. Completely. Completely. Uh, now, now I just know it's human. Yeah, that's a good thing to learn. Really good thing to learn. Um, and that's what I got a lot. I, I I went through that a lot. Is like when when you think oh, uh, like I, you start feeling sad and then you get into that and you I must be sad for a reason. Like pay, yeah. giving too much importance importance to your emotions is like a bad idea yeah too much importance to your emotions is a bad idea um, because when you start feeling it you think oh I must be feeling this for a reason then you spiral into it but sometimes mm. you're just hungry you haven't enough sugar you're tired yeah. and all these things just flare up oh yeah there's always like a reason yeah um, like there's like a, a reason that isn't just these it, emotions aren't this like weird spiritual thing that if you feel one thing it all me it means <laughs> that this must happen. So if you if you feel like for one minute that you're not gonna do it, that the whole universe has just gone boom, it's not happening. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know, that's my two cents in it. It's like but yeah. Ninety ninety like ninety seven percent of my day is I'm gonna do this, it's gonna happen, it's gonna work. Um, and that comes across. And like a hundred percent of me goes I believe I can. 
Not so much I will, because obviously death and, there's, there's and variables. That's a good there's, thing there's like, to say. Yes, but, it's a good... But I believe, like, 100% I can. Mm -hmm. Slightly less that I will. Good. Like... That is I a honestly, really important point. I, I know. Like, I 100% believe I can. I have the potential. I have the work ethic. I just stick at shit, because... Half of it's stubbornness. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, so, so it's just me being really kind of stubborn and, and kind of, you know, bloody-minded. But, uh, like, I, I don't know. I just believe I can. Um, like, I think I get on with people enough, like the events, organisers, and people yeah. that matter. Yeah. I think that kind of comes naturally to me now. Before I was really socially awkward and found it really hard to price myself and, and kind of interact on a professional basis with someone. That's what I find hard. It's really basis. hard. It's like really, really hard. And then putting aside your social stuff. So like, because what we do is at generally quite sociable hours when you yeah. would normally be with our friends and family and yeah. then to rip yourself away from that. But that's why I think I can do it. Because yeah. I've never entered into that. <laughs> Yeah. I've never entered into the social hours. Fair. That's why I'm not like fairly certain I can. That's why I believe a hundred percent I can. Because I know my job is the social hours. The yeah. the hours that people go and see stage shows. Yeah. Is the hours I'm at home practicing. Alone. Like that's just it. Fair. When people go out and drink and go to nineteen twenties house parties. And have a really great fucking time. <laughs> that's when I'm working. And if I wasn't working, that's the time I'd be alone, practicing. Cool. <laughs> that's a good point to make. Um, and and I a hundred percent appreciate how difficult it is when you've entered into that social hours to rip yourself out of it. It is hard. And man. go to work. You're missing. You're missing a lot of your life. I did for a long time. I did, I, I worked in bars and clubs and it was horrible. Yeah, I, for a long time I worked in bars and clubs and it was horrible. Because the friends you have mm. are the ones that come and drink. Yeah, <laughs> and you're like, exactly. brilliant. But I actually like my friends. But I'm at an age now where a lot of my friends are leaving for like different for jobs yeah. and different things. So it's kind of a good thing to learn. That's a good thing. Like, it's, it's sad. But then I appreciate it more when they're back and when I see them, and yeah. it means that I could actually get on with like the job I actually want to do. Yeah. So it's kind of cool. Um. And that, like, the fact is that to be a working magician, you don't have to do it every night of the week. You don't have to do it every single Saturday. You can work a few nights. Like no, that's week. what. That's. Yeah. Uh, but I know also no. <laughs> yes, but no. Yeah, go, I know exactly. Go all fucking. In. For, for, like, again, I know there's a really great contradiction and, and different stance on this. But for me, I don't see any other way apart from all in. Yeah, Like, fair. just because I know how tough it is. If I was doing half the amount of work I was doing, it'd be so much harder. And I know how hard it is at the moment. If I was working half as hard, I don't think I'd make it. Fair. Like, Let's you get what I'm saying? <laughs> it's just... Yeah, like, I don't want to drag out this point too long, but, I mean, it's probably going to be edited down, but, I mean... It's just so tough to do, like, to do something creative that you want to do. Yeah, man. And, and I acknowledge that so much. It, it just... It just makes me sad when people don't go all in. And that... Well... It doesn't annoy me when people don't go all in. It, it annoys me when people don't go all in, and then complain that they're not making it. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give you that. That that's what really that's fair. That, that's what upsets me. That, that's what makes me go, do you really want it? It's when people complain that they're not making it, they're not making the the advances, the the they're not stepping up the rungs of the ladder that mm -hmm. they want to do. But they're not going all in. Yeah. It's because I know how hard it is to step up the rungs of the ladder, even when you're all fucking in. When people are only like half in, one foot in, 20% in, and they're complaining that they're not making progress, that's when I go, fuck off. 
like it's hard enough when you're all in <laughs> like you're gonna have to be all in just so you stand a chance to make yeah, it fine yeah. is is obviously there's luck and there's chance and there's random happenings and the people that don't aren't all in sometimes make it for sure fine but by large you have to be fucking all in to make it <laughs> Um, and it takes a long time to master it, right? Yeah, I mean... And like mastery... So I read this article on, uh, on mastery, mastering something. And back ages ago, years and years ago, I don't, I don't, I don't know what... This, this is like, we're talking 1900s, 1800s, like, yeah. we're talking hundreds of years ago, right? They're, they used to be apprentices. So, in, so someone would be the, like the village blacksmith. Yeah. And then... The apprentice would sign up, sign a contract that they have to work for them for seven years. For sure. And that was roughly how long it took to master something. Yeah. The seven year thing, seven to ten years is roughly how long it takes for someone to master something. So that's why apprenticeships were like that, that, that long. And okay. It follows like the 10,000 hour rule. Yeah. And that that's roughly the amount of time it takes for you to do that. Which is pretty interesting. And if, if you're not, if you don't like something, seven years of it is quite yeah. a long time. You either, if if you don't like something, after seven years, you're either gonna love it by force, or you're gonna despise it. Yeah. <laughs> or you're gonna be in a stuck dead end job for seven years that you didn't like. Yeah. So like for me, like now I'm I'm 25. It's horrible. I hate it. Oh, I've, I've got five my... years on you. Yeah, that's fine. I know. Sure. Um. So, I remember when I was 15 or six, 16. I just started magic. You started magic at 16? Yeah, I know. Wow. I just wow. didn't stick it very well. Because of X, Y, and Z. You know? That's uh, a shame, man. It is, man. Don't. don't. So I wish out. I was younger when I started, you know? Yeah, man. And I'm 20. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So, But now I'm getting up to the 10 year mark of having started. And if I had tried that hard, but back then for that whole thing, I'd have been a master by now. Alright? Yeah. I would have been very good, but I would have been. I you would have been, been very, really very good. good by now, yeah, yeah. see? So, but like that whole seven years thing is daunting. Yeah, because, man. Because you go, oh, God. But then it won't take you seven years to at least be good and enjoy it. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's well, there's what... there's stages. There's it's stages. not just like seven years of shit and then you'll suddenly have fun. <laughs> and then, oh, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's seven years of, of working hard, but then getting better and better and better. It's the little things. You've got to take every little win <laughs> and take it for what it is, not, not just go... Seven years time, I might be good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is horrible. I think that's what sometimes stops me. But now I'm getting to this age, and I think, okay, now in seven years or in ten years, I'll be thirty-five. But then, if I don't try now, then I won't be good at that age. Oh God, no! You, so you got to start. You, you've got to start. You've got to stick at. Like, if you kind of want to do it and you just enjoy it on the odd weekend, then yeah, I get you. Like, not just just get you. I I get you one. Get what you meant. Yeah, I got you. Um, but yeah, I mean, if if you want to do it as a career, yeah, the odd Saturday is just not gonna cut it. And that's not advice to you. No, that's, that's like advice to like advice. everyone. Yeah, I got, I, um, I got like, I'm, I'm so much better in the last three weeks than I have been. Like I've made more progress in the last like three weeks I have in the like la la last year yeah maybe well you, apart from London Be because I, because I've been doing different stuff it's hard to see what, exactly what goes yeah, up yeah yeah and like working on different areas like for a while we were working on stage together oh I missed that so I got worse at the close up but better at stage and then I got better at escapology but worse at stage and then I got better at street performing and worse at stage uh, and then it, it's all circular, but all the levels are kind of bumping up at different points. Um, yeah, they're still. They're but still, at street yeah. performing, I'm so much better in the past three weeks than I have been in the like all five years. So like, but I've only been able to get to this point after five years. Yeah. Of yeah. doing it every day, like the first two years, like I'll be honest. I've slowed down <laughs> in the last year. Uh, the first two years I was street performing, the first year, every day, right? I started in uh, mid-February when it's still raining and kind of snowing. God, February? February, right? Uh, mid-February. Like, because I just turned 16. 
bad I'd, I'd been living with my dad for like a month or so, and, and I wanted to go busking before I was 16. And because I just moved in with my dad, he, he didn't really feel that comfortable. He wanted me to at least be 16 before I go out and start busking. Um, and my again, my birthday is 10th of January. And obviously in January, it's, it's really cold, really yeah, raining. Yeah. So, so, you know, it, it took a month for me to, to get slightly warmer. But I, literally mid-February, just turned 16, I think mid... I was still at college. Uh, no. no. Uh, I was still sitting exams at school. I'd left school, but still sitting the exams. I wasn't going to a school, but I was taking the exams and home studying because I moved to Brighton. That's um, cool. That was cool. Uh, I failed, like, massively. Um, fine. Not so cool, still, yeah. But... <laughs> <laughs> fine. But, you know, not cool, but fine. Um, and, and whilst doing the, the, the studying and, and the exam... I, I'll be honest, I didn't study. I, I just took the exams. <laughs> I didn't study shit. I, I, a, a little bit. For, for English, I studied a bit. For, for everything else, I, I didn't. Um, but between that and, like, a year later, from when I was 16 to 17, like, every day I could, I was out on the street busking. And I did... Bear in mind... I didn't really know what busking was then. Yeah. Um, I was just doing my own little thing. I had my own little table. I was just doing like walk by close up for yeah. people. Really nervous, really socially awkward. Just left school, like 16. I was the worst. But I was out there every day doing really bad magic. <laughs> but getting better every single day. Yeah. And, and when I say every single day, I don't mean like every weekend. I mean like even on the Mondays, Tuesday, Wednesdays, God. when nobody's in town, I was stood on the same road, same spot, all day for at least six or seven hours. Yeah. When I'd maybe done magic for two people that day, but I'd still stuck at it six hours every day. And then I'd wake up in the morning and I couldn't wait to get back out. Like, for that first year, I really couldn't. The second year rolled around, and and I kind of saw that the Mondays, Tuesday, Wednesdays weren't as busy as yeah. the Thursday, Friday, Saturdays. Yeah. And I had started uh, college at that time. So I had college in the, in the weekdays too. But every, I think, I think I was at college Monday, Tuesday, Friday. So I was out Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. All day, every day. Nice. Again for another year. And then when it was the holidays, like the school holidays and half term, I was out every fucking day again, just because I couldn't wait to be back on the street. All day, every day. And it was busier on the weekdays because it was school holidays. So I could actually do every day of that week. And I was out there every day. And then the like third and fourth year, I slowed down again. Because at that point, I was kind of getting better, slightly more confident, yeah. earning more money. I'd really sorted out what days financially were good on the return for investment, on the hours. Yeah. yeah. Spider. Um, and then I really started choosing the days. I was doing like uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Because I found that if I was practicing alone on new material on the weekdays. And then went out. And went out on the Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That was like the best investment for my time. Yeah, cool. And then uh, last year, I I had a wobble. Uh, I think it was us doing stage magic when I stopped doing the streets so much last year. Because uh, I, I, I wanted to like go all in on, on the stage because I thought I was good enough. And I liked stage a lot. Love stage. Um, so, so I, I started not going out as much busking, but I was still all in at what I thought I wanted to do. Yeah, man, we were good at that. Um, so even though I stopped the street performing, I was still all in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And that's coming back to like what we were saying, like, don't just pick something. Like, I didn't just pick street performing as what I wanted to do. I just picked magic. Yeah. Like, I wanted to perform. I knew I wanted to do magic in some permutation. I went all in on magic. First it was street performing, because that's what I could do. And then I think during the first three years, 
I at some point I went all in on private uh, gigs and really tried getting weddings and, and parties. And I put, I made websites. I did all the promotion. I was handing out business cards all the time and really forcing the parties whilst I was on the street. I was promoing myself uh, to people. And then I went all in on that. And then I went back and didn't really like it because I was still really socially awkward and didn't like approaching people at parties because yeah. I felt really weird. Yeah. So I went all in back on the street <laughs> because I knew I wanted to do it. I just didn't know how I wanted to do it. Yeah. But I was still all in. Uh, and then last year we did this stage. And then this year, after going to Covent Garden, like I saw some really great guys up there and I just fell back in love with street performing. Yeah, man. Um, and then I, I dabbled a bit in March and April down in Brighton to do some stuff. And, and I was, I, I'll be honest, that was the bit where I got a, that that three percent, where I kind of wobbled a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, not sure, because, because it was still quite early in the season, it wasn't busy, yeah. and I was really fighting and really struggling to get a crowd. Whereas yeah. in London, because it was busier over Christmas, I thought, wow, this is this is for me. I fell in love with street performers up in Covent Garden. Yeah. I saw what they were doing and what they were able to do, and like how they captivated an audience when they had an audience. So then I came back to, to Brighton and really fought hard to get an audience. And it, it just wasn't busy enough because when Brighton's quiet, Brighton's Brighton quiet. Street, right, yeah. um, and then May rolled around and it was busy again. <laughs> oh man, it, best thing ever. Like yeah. the floodgates opened and, and I vote, yeah. Because I said to my dad, I had a conversation with my dad and... And he said, Can, you know, is this viable? Because this is my fifth season, right? So my dad's seen me go out for five years and kind of do okay yeah. at street performing. Um, like, not amazing, but okay. I've always been able to be stable. I've always been able to pay my expenses from what I've been doing. Yeah. But I haven't been making loads of money. So, so after five years, my dad, you know... I came in one day after having a bad day busking and I said, I don't think I can do this anymore. Like, I don't want to stick out anymore. And, and it was really tough. Like, I had a really bad day after, like, a week of kind of not-so-great days. Yeah. And, and I think what made it worse was me seeing how great London was. Yeah, and then coming back to that. And then coming back to people that didn't really, like... It just it was just really hard. So so my so my dad said, you know, he turned around and said You know, can is this viable? Is this you know, are you gonna be able to do it? And then I said Yeah, if there was people. Like I've always been good once I've got a crowd. Yeah. But what I really struggled with, like London like, we went into this, the, the last podcast, yeah. where, like, the first few seconds, I'd rather call up and die. Yeah. That I had in London. And then I felt, when I came back to Brighton, that I couldn't... So, so I went to London, had the, oh, shit, I'd rather die, but then overcame that up in London, yeah. because everyone was doing it, and that was the done thing. Yeah. Then I came back to Brighton, where it's not the done thing, no. Nobody goes, roll up, roll up, ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to start my last show of the day. You know, no, nobody does that in Brighton. No. So I didn't feel like I could do that in Brighton. So then I tricked myself back into, I'll just stand here every day and wait until I get a crowd. Fine. Which, I, which had kind of been working for me for the past four years. You just do close up and when a crowd gathers, you do a show. Yeah. I thought that's kind of how it worked. I knew it wasn't but I kind of tricked myself into believing that's what you do. Mm -hmm. um, but then seeing London and then trying to do that in Brighton, but then not feeling like I could, that what really sucked me back under. Yeah. And I, I doubted whether I'd be able to do it in Brighton. Yeah. And, and my dad said, you know, can you do this? And I said, well, yeah, I just, it's not busy enough. And he didn't believe me. Like, he, he really didn't believe me. Like, 
He didn't tell me he didn't believe me, but I could kind of sense it. Yeah. You know when, like, and I think that's kind of what parents have to do, is they kind of just don't say anything mm -hmm. and kind of let you figure it out for yourself when you get to a certain age. Yeah. But I could kind of sense that he didn't believe me. But I really believed me. Like, I was all in. Like, I knew if I had a you crowd, I'd be able to do it. And then May came around, and there was fucking crowds. And the first day in the May Festival, I had cracked and, like, blasted open my, like, earning high. Like, I'd, I'd topped my previous earning potential yeah. by a hundred pounds. And that's, a like, lot a money. lot of money, yeah. like, to up your all-time yeah. best. Um, because bear in mind, I was I was doing okay yeah. busking in the third and fourth year. I was making decent money for my age, and I had cracked that by a hundred pounds. Like my all-time best in four years, I topped it by a hundred pounds on the first day that That's I had cool. a crowd, and th that it was busy. That's so cool. And then I went fuck yeah. And then and then I went from believing to knowing. Yeah. And I just knew I could do it. Like, there's, there's a very small but distinct difference between believing and knowing. Where, like, you can have faith, mm -hmm. but then you can just know it to your core. Yeah. Um, and after that first day in May, I knew. Like, I was just, yeah, okay, this is it. I, I it. believed, I know now. Like, now I know. And, and, and I, you know, proved it consistently over May. That I can do it, yeah. and I've got so much better because I've been doing like five to seven shows a day, yeah, in yeah. front of a good crowd, yeah. doing it every day, not every day, but every weekend, yeah. Um, and I, that's why I'm so much better now in the past three weeks because I I've been going and going and spinning my hamster wheel for four years and getting better and learning all the undercurrents. I'll wait for you. Yeah. Learning the undercurrents of what you actually need and the experiences that you have to have to make you strong enough to do it when it's right there. Like, you can have the opportunities but not be ready for yeah. them and still suck. Yeah. But you actually have to go through all the shit. So when you get an opportunity, you're ready you're for it. Enough. Yeah, that's it. Um, and that's happened just this year. And that's only happened because I've been all in for five years. Right? I've been doing magic for seven years. Been busking. Like, this is my fifth season busking. Yeah. If I wasn't all in for all those five years at one avenue of magic, I would not have been so much better now in the past three weeks than I have ever. And actually performing as well. Like, the hours you put in really fucking count. They do. And the quality of the hours, right? So well, it's both, but you even if you're doing like bad quality hours, they still matter. Oh, they still because matter because they they make you strong. Like when I was doing seven hours on the street performing to two people, the quality of my hours sucked shit. But you, yeah. But if I didn't spend five hours without talking to anyone, getting really fucking tough, like yeah. my my skin is so fucking tough now because I spent five hours on the street. Looking like a complete fucking arsehole. Uh, fair. I'm not the same. Per like, if I just had quality hours, I'd be weak as fuck. Yeah. I'd be good, but weak. You get oh, me? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I get you. You know, like if you I, just have really I quality don't mean hours. Quality as as in all of them good. Yeah. I mean quality as in like how much you learn from them. Oh god, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so being able to do like actually perform to people as opposed to sitting and doing the same trick you know. Right? Yeah, there's, yeah. There's obviously oh, quality gotcha. in learning, yeah. but like actually going out and yeah. performing. It gets to a point where you just have to go out and do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even if it's the two people, that's still yeah. two people that oh. hadn't ever seen it before. But I, I, I didn't know what I was doing when I was spending five hours alone. Yeah, 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 yeah. But now, I kind of regret it. In a way, I wish I was more ambitious when I was younger. But I know for sure that I'm a stronger person, like without a doubt. I'm a lot stronger because of those five hours yeah. alone every yeah. day. Yeah. 
That's it doesn't it. make it easier, but it makes you tougher. It does. I remember um, doing door to door sales. It's a similar feeling. Oh, yeah. yeah it's a similar Fuck. feeling. That's tough. Many days I've gone home crying from that. Yeah. And I got no. Co I just only got paid when I got a sale. Yeah. There's no like commission. There's no like base pay. It's just. It's don't. just commission. Yeah, that was bad. Fuck. If you don't get a sale, you don't get paid. <laughs> yeah. There was, like. At least you get better. There was, uh, I don't know. <laughs> of, well, you, you either quit or you, or get, you get, out. get better. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I got out. Yeah. I got better, then I got out. Shit. Because it was crap. <laughs> it was crap. Um, but yeah, doing like from nine o'clock in the morning to the ten o'clock at night, and then and then getting paid like that five days a week and getting paid ninety pound. Shit. That was brutal. That was my tough skin. <laughs> yeah. Right, I needed a piss for so fucking okay. long, man, it hurts. No worries, <laughs> we're gonna go. Oh, that was good, though.